Um, well, that's a new addition. They didn't used to yeah. announce that. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Renee Hustling from City Center Arts, and we are located in the lower level of the Century Club building at 356 West Western Avenue in downtown Muskegon. Uh, we have tonight with us our featured artist for the current show that we have that will be hanging through July 11th, and her name is Linda Goss. Hi, everybody. Uh, so uh, we'll kind of do interview style. We're going to take a look at some of Linda's work. I put together a presentation. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, if you don't mind muting yourself, just in case there's any background noise, I, I will do the same. Um, and Linda's going to do the majority of the talking, but she will be prompted with some questions from me also. So Linda, um, to get started, why don't you kind of share your artist background and how you got where you're at today? Um, I remember always being an artist, always drawing. Even when I was little, I don't know what started it exactly or why I think I just doodle while I'm talking or if I was done with my schoolwork, I'd start drawing or I remember I was, I, I don't know, some kids like they'll see a magic act and they'll say, I want to be a magician. Well, I remember seeing a, a friend of my dad's, he could just draw cartoons and draw anything, just give him a piece of paper and he'll draw and that like four or five years old, I just was amazed that somebody could just draw all these cartoons, Popeye or Bugs Bunny or anything you tell them to draw. So I was always drawing since I was little and, and I liked art all through school and I took art in high school, all the art I could take. Then uh, I took art in college, <laughs> but I didn't think, you know, as a profession, an artist, I didn't know, you know, if I could be you know, make it unless you went off to New York City or something, which I wasn't planning on doing. I was interested in fashion design. And one of my instructors said, well, if you want to be a fashion designer, you have to move to New York City. And I didn't want to move to New York City in the 70s. It was just scary to me. <laughs> so I got the art with the art teaching degree, K through 12. I went to Delta Col Community College over by Saginaw Bay City for two years. And then I transferred to Western Michigan University and got my teaching certificate for K through 12. And uh, I went back to keep my continuing certificate. So, and I've been, I was teaching art while we were moving around a lot. My husband's a GM gypsy. So wherever I moved, I was either subbing or teaching and doing my own art. And, and then, after retirement, I just wanted to keep doing my own art. So I'm still doing that. So when you were teaching, what grades did you normally teach or how, how did that work with, with you know, teaching art? Was it multiple grades or? Um, well, the last place I was at was West Michigan Academy for the Arts and uh, it's in Spring Lake now. It started out, I think it was 96 or 97 started out in uh, Robinson Township. And I had K through eight art. And then I also taught some other subjects, they kind of wherever they needed like reading or social studies, other subjects besides art. And, and the, over at West Michigan Academy for the Arts when they started, I was going to the classroom. So I'd go to the kindergarten classroom and then I moved to the whatever next hour was third grade or fifth grade or, and then when they had uh, some class, the bigger kids, the eighth, seventh and eighth graders would come to my classroom. So and I subbed quite a bit and I sometimes was a traveling art teacher too. Like I might teach at a junior high in Grand Haven and then go to Peach Plains Elementary in the afternoon. So you have to take, you know, move around to different schools. So how did you come up with, or maybe the curriculum was there for you, but like when you had to go teach a kindergarten class, where, where did you get the ideas for what you were going to teach them or what you, you, know, what you were going to guide them to do? Um, a lot of the 
classes I took at Western were for art education. And we actually made a, a book. It was a really thick, bigger than an old phone book, a thick book of every grade. And we made a um, projects, classroom projects for kindergarten, for first grade, uh, all the way up through 12th grade. So you could just go in that book and pick out a project or if you want to go, go on your own, I could go on my own like a, a lot of times when I substitute taught, and if there wasn't a lesson plan, there's usually a lesson plan left by the teacher. But if there wasn't, I would pick out or take with me a book that I liked. Um, there's a lot of children's books that promote doing art projects. I, I liked uh, The Lupine Lady. So I'd read the book and then we would draw or you know paint whatever, whatever materials we do pertaining to that story, either making lupines or maybe your favorite flower or something you saw that the, the moral of the story was like, make the world a better place than what you found it. So she, this lady was just throwing lupine seeds all over the landscape, wherever she went and lupines would come up every year. So um, there's other arts or, oh, there was a, a book called, um, Norman the Dorman, he was a little mouse that uh, guarded the art museum in town. And it was a fun story. So I'd sometimes do that book. But um, in Grand Haven, it was the teachers would usually have a lesson plan already ready. So, but yeah, I have lots, I still have all my lesson plans. <laughs> so. Good. That, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, you know, I know um, I've seen a lot of your work that comes into the gallery, obviously, and you, you do quite a variety of different mediums. Um, I know you do pottery, you do jewelry, um, you know, painting, uh, I've even seen photography from, from you. So what kind of you know, what inspires you when you start to think about creating something? What inspires you? Well, I do take a lot of photos and those aren't my final work usually, but when I see flowers or a lighthouse or something that's really awesome and I wanna take a photo of it, I think this would be a good photo. I have so many photos, you know, where this would be a good painting. <laughs> you know? So uh, my photography inspires what I paint, like the tree roots right here. I took the, a picture of some tree roots in the woods when I was walking. And I thought that would be a good painting. So I'll just hang on to all these photos. And then I sometimes change them. Like I had a, called a human landscape. I took a lot of uh, drawings from figure drawing class and had these bodies laying down and they turned into a landscape with trees. So it was kind of surrealistic, but it's fun to mix two things, you know, bodies reclining and then turning them into hills and trees and um, making it more than just what it actually is, turning it into something like dreamlike. Okay, well, we may see some of that in the in the presentation that I put together that you have in the gallery right now too, so. Okay. Yeah, um, so let's, why don't we go over to that presentation. I'll share my screen here. And we can look at some of Linda's work. And she'll she'll share with us what in, maybe inspired her about this, you know, piece of work, or if she has any um, any special techniques that she used, go ahead and share that, Linda, too, and, and just anything you want to about each of these pieces. So okay, okay, that's called the big G. It's four by four and it's a shaped canvas, which I use, I start out with the plywood, eight foot by four foot piece of plywood cut in half is four by four. And then I draw the design on the, well, I have a drawing first that I just did on paper. Then I draw the design on the wood and um, I wrap it with canvas. So canvas on the top wrapped around, it has some wood trim on it. And um, this is done in acrylic paints. And I actually took 
uh, my name, last name, Goss, and I used the letter G to uh, be like a logo for my last name. And uh, even though it looks like there's only a G there, there's also an O and an S. So all the letters of my last name are represented. Interesting. And um, I learned how to do the shape canvas from one of my teachers at Delta, Larry Butcher. So I did a couple of shape canvases and they're big and <laughs> bulky, so they're not real easy to carry around, but it's they're fun to do. And so since this one is kind of customized with your name, where do you do you have a spot at home that you hang this normally? Um, I do have it on a larger wall, but sometimes I switch things around because I have other people's paintings. So I like I move things around all the time. Good. Okay, let's see what's next. Um, one of my um, ceramic pots uh, done on the wheel. When I went to, uh, I took a couple classes at Saginaw Valley State University in ceramics. I liked ceramics in high school. And then when I went to Western and you, uh, when you have a teaching, art teaching program, they ask you to choose an area of concentration. So I chose ceramics. So ceramics, my area of concentration went. So I made, you know, major did a lot of work in ceramics off all the time that I was at Western. I've never had my own studio in ceramics. So I've never had a kiln or wheel, but I wherever I find one, like at Muskegon Community College has them. So I sometimes go over there and take a class without credit just to use all the equipment and when I feel like throwing some pottery. This is a, a glaze of like cream color and for those little speckles, you could take like a toothbrush and splatter a different color glaze over the top to get some texture. Very nice. Thanks. This is a lithograph and it's a print, printmaking technique. And uh, I did it in a class and we actually use these great big limestones, big limestones. You had to carry them with a forklift because they're too heavy to carry by hand. And the lithographs could also be, also be made with a metal plate, but in this class, we did it with the great big limestone. And this started out when I was doodling sometimes well, way back when you, we didn't have the cell phones and we were tied to a phone and we couldn't walk around. When I'm talking on the phone, I'll just stay, sit there and doodle. Or if I'm at a meeting, I'll be doodling. Or <laughs> I don't know, I'm always doodling. So this started out as a doodle and it's not anything realistic. So uh, it's a, not an objective art. And um, I kind of felt like it was similar to a kaleidoscope, but I didn't want to title it because sometimes when people look at your art, I like to let them decide what it is. If, if it's not really anything realistic, they can, you know, figure out maybe it's a kaleidoscope or maybe it's a wind tunnel or it could be, you know, whatever the viewer thinks that it could be. Mm -hmm. right. I like a lot of uh, beach scenes, so I take pictures of beaches a lot and sunsets. And this was like an hour before the sunset. It's done in acrylics, and um, I think, so I think it's only twelve by twelve. Both of those are twelve by twelve inches. another ceramics piece. This is not made on the wheel. It's made on a, it's made like when you're right rolling out a pie crust, it's sort of like that. They have big rolling pins there. They also have slab rollers, but it's, if you don't have a slab roller, you use a great big rolling pin, roll up your clay like it's a great big pie crust. And then I had a great big round, um, I don't know, it was 18 by 18 inches round. And I just, uh, 
draped it over a plaster bowl shape or form and let it dry on that plaster and took it took on the shape itself. Then the glaze, I used a stencil with it's this, you could tell where I used the spray book where they spray the glaze on and then the stencil are these little diamond shapes. So it was like a piece of metal that if you spray it have a stencil design. And I called it a wave bowl. And the picture doesn't do it justice. It, justice. It, it, it's um, sometimes hard as to get a good photograph, but it is a beautiful piece. The tricky part of it was when it's wet and it's a great big, like a great big flat round circle and it's wet and to pick it up and put it over a bowl, it was like, I don't know if I could do this, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like a, a hand rolled pizza, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know if I can whip this pizza in the air, but you do it. Good. Jewelry making, I also took jewelry making at Western and I didn't take it till my senior year. And that's when I found out I really like jewelry making. So I, um, when I went back for my aging credit hours, I took more jewelry making classes. And these are just beaded on, but some of the jewelry making classes, I, you know, we learned soldering and casting and using silver and lots of nice stones. Don't you have some in the gallery that are like a stone that's wire wrapped? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, wire wrapped stones. Great. And like this piece and the wire wrapping, you can do at home without any special equipment. You don't need to solder and you don't need to cast. So you don't need torches. It's just a lot of the handwork and designing. You can draw it out on paper for your design. And I like rocks and minerals too, so. Oh, my birdhouse. <laughs> okay, the birdhouse, the wood part, was just a blank wood back, you know, birdhouse with nothing on it. So I wanted to decorate it. And I, at that time I was watching a lot of HGTV and I like beach houses. So I thought I'd turn this birdhouse into a beachy birdhouse. And I got that scale design off of a pillow I have. I like the design of the fish scales. And then on the backside, it's a, uh, like a tsunami wave that um, it's a famous Japanese uh, wave. I don't, I think it's called tsunami. Could be. And the seashells on it. I, this is what, this is one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, I call it beach it bird house, beach, soon, beach if, bird house. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't sell pretty soon, I, I might have to buy it. I have a pillow right here, I'll get it. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I like the uh, fish scale design. So I did that on the, the birdhouse. OK, so your inspiration comes from many places. <laughs> yeah. Beach stuff. I like a lot of beach stuff. And that's the same right here is the same design as the black and white litho, but in color with the acrylics on a shaped canvas. And that canvas is four by four again. I use plywood. Around the edges, since it's not just a square, you know, on a square or a rectangle, you have wood around all the sides. Well, since this is a shape, I had little pieces of wood. They're like one by one, all the way around the edge of that piece. And then it's covered with canvas wrapped around. Same way you wrap around a canvas around a square or rectangle, but this is around a shape, so. And then I did have some spaces in there that are open spaces. Four foot by four foot, right? Correct. Right, right. I started out with a plywood that's eight by four and cut it in half. So there's a plywood on the back and a plywood on the front, and then it's co all covered with canvas and stapled around the on the back, stapled like just like a regular canvas, a rectangle or a square. 
Yeah. And that's that same doodle that I thought, well, I like the colors, purples and teals and kind of like beach colors again. So yeah, that that uh, both of those large pieces I had not seen before. Oh, and it just kind of grabs you when you come into the gallery. Yeah, I kind of cut down on making the large ones because they do take up space and they are heavy to, to carry around. And so I, I'll go with the smaller <laughs> stuff. Uh, the lady on the top in the black frame is uh, I've titled it Empathy. I just thought her face was emotional and I did it with pointillism with ink, pen and ink. And then the two top, these are two ceramic tiles that are painted on with um, alcohol ink. And I, I didn't do alcohol ink when I was in college or school, but a friend of mine, Anna Ziza, taught us how to do this. And um, it was really fun and bright colors. And uh, it, you use the, ink and then you also use some alcohol instead of it's almost like watercolor but instead of water you're using alcohol for your moving your paint or your ink around and we also used um i can't think of it but it's kind of like a resist we drew the like the sunflower i drew that with the resist and wherever that resist was the ink doesn't adhere to the tile. So then later on, when the whole thing is dry, we rub off, it's almost like that rubber cement and it's a resist. So you rub off that um, resist. I can't think of the name of it. We sell it probably all art stores. And we rubbed it off and then had all the white lines and the white outlines of the sunflower and the leaves. Then the other one on the bottom was, uh, kind of like a beach scene with the water and the sand. And those are, did you make the tiles also or did? No, no, they're just white plain tiles. Um, I think you can buy them like any like Home Depot or anywhere. Um, like a subway tile probably. Yeah, kind of like a subway tile for a backsplash. And I found out actually that you can't put food or water on these because I I used one for a coaster once and the whole design came off. So they're not a permanent, like you wouldn't be able to put them for a backsplash or um, use them for coasters or food. Okay. Oh, that's what's behind me. My tree roots, I call it forest floor. And I did it during COVID last year. I thought I should be doing something with all this time on my hands, but I was kind of bummed out and kind of in a rut. But then uh, I was looking through my photos and I thought, you know, I need to do one of my photos because I have so many photos. So I did this forest floor, tree roots. And it's acrylic and it's 16 by 20. Um, figure drawing I like to do. I don't have any figures to do, but um, uh, this was done with Conti crayon, which is kind of like chalk and pastels. And a lot of the, like I said, figures I turn into landscapes. <laughs> so. um, this is the painting, it's acrylic. Well, it started out with acrylic and then I added oil over the top wherever there's yellow lights. And it's uh, called triptych or triptych, three parts. Each part is two feet wide by four feet tall. And the whole total thing is six feet wide by four feet tall. The title is Nubs Knob, which is a ski area up in Harbor Springs, Michigan. And I worked from a photo. And I did, oh, to, it was kind of overwhelming at first to look at a big 
blank white canvas and then looking at a photo that's like four by six inches. So I decided to do the grid method, which I learned, I don't know, back in maybe my freshman year of college. So every inch on the photo, if you put a grid over the top of it, like the cellophane, or you could draw on it if you don't, or make trace, you can use tracing paper. Every one square inch on the um, big painting, I did one foot by one foot squares. So what, like in the top left corner, there'd be a square that's one by one foot. That would be the top corner of the photo. And then each little square, you would, I would draw what I saw on each square from the photo in that square on the big canvas. So once I had it all in there, I could do the paint, start the painting. And, and I, I did grid, grid method with um, junior high when I was uh, doing my student teaching up in Bay City at Bangor Junior High. And the kids didn't know what the final picture was going to look like because I just gave them a little one by one inch square and they were supposed to draw it onto a piece of paper that was one foot by one foot. So that's, they only got one, it was like a puzzle. They got one piece of the puzzle to draw. When everybody had their pieces done, then we put them all up on the wall. And then they found out it was a picture of a, a guy surfing on a wave. So that was fun. Yeah. So is this a commission piece, if I remember correctly? Yeah, yeah my, um, my husband's cousin lives up in Harbor Springs and he knows I'm a painter and he's got a big blank wall. He asked me if I would be interested in doing that and I did. And uh, I said, instead of having it six by four, could I do it in three sections? It might be easier to transport, transport easier to hang on the wall and just break it down to bites for me when I was painting. So he said, sure, he can do it in three parts. So how do you, um, when you do a commission piece like this, kind of talk about your process and how you work with your client? Um, I mean, this one, there was obviously a photo to work from, but do you have clients that you work with that maybe aren't sure what they want and you've got to walk them through step by step or how does that, how does that happen? Usually everybody pretty much knows what they want, but I have done murals and the, the, the first mural I did at Delta College, they came into our design class and looked at um, some designs all the students had done and they chose my design. So I already knew I was going to do this design on the wall in the counseling center. Then another mural I did inside a restaurant and the owner wanted it to be like a boating theme with a lake. He actually put a, a pontoon boat inside his restaurant in the corner and he wanted the wall behind it to look like you're out on a lake with the sky and the water and boats going around and so he told me what he wanted and then I just picked all the different pictures I wanted to use people on boats, sailboats, water skiing, whatever, you know, in the picture. Um, let's see. Oh, I did have, um, I don't even know if I kn knew her, but she knew what I painted. So she asked me to do a picture of her parents she had a photo of them a lot like a lot of people will have dog portraits or uh, well she had a photo of her mom and dad so she just gave me the photo and asked me to do that <laughs> so um usually they know what they want they just don't say you know if they if they do just pick out one of my paintings you know then that's nearly not a commission so it's, oh I have done some quilts this one lady I met in New York City, she makes clothes and out of silk and the silk she designs herself, the prints on the silk. And I said, 
what if you have scraps I could make you a quilt with that so she gave me all her scraps and I just made her a quilt with it and then she asked for more she ordered a queen two twins and a king so great so that was the last piece that I put in the presentation so um let's open it up for questions I'm going to stop sharing my screen now um, does anyone have any questions or comments for Linda? Linda, the big pieces that you have? Yeah. That reminds me of Frank Stella. I don't know if you know Frank Stella. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, it's very industrial and it's huge. How long did you um, from start, well, from design, or from ideas to finish, how long did it take for you to do that? I really don't keep track of my time, but um, I know when I started doodling, I was, I think, in a classroom. I was subbing, and it was high school, and all the kids were all doing their own art, so I started drawing something. And then later on, I just saved it. I didn't really um do it right away but I just saved it in my sketchbook I've got sketches that I probably could use right now that I sketched a long time ago so then later on I thought I want to make one of those same canvases like we were taught to do and I had to go you know get the lumber and do the whole process of building the canvas but um I really have no idea how much time <laughs> I, I know Renee, in the past uh, interview, she asked people how much time they spend on their work. And I don't know. I don't, you know, sometimes when you're working on something, you kind of lose track of time. Some people call it you're in the zone or you just, <laughs> you don't even know you haven't eaten or you need to go to bed or what. You know, it's, <laughs> Time for a break, but that really big uh, nub knob, the ski hill took, I, I, that was one of the piece that I did purposely write down my hours because everybody always says, how long did it take you to do that? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. So I wrote down every time I, I wrote, I started and finished. It was like two hours and I take a break and then I come back two hours and I don't remember what the total was, but I did keep track on that one. Yeah, well, and you kind of do have to do that sometimes at least. So, so you know how much to charge someone. I mean, how do you arrive at that? Uh, you don't charge by the hours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that thing that those little four by four inch wooden, you saw the video I did, that took like less than five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, but I think I, they're like an inspiration. I'm looking at them. They're over here too. I think I might do something big like that, just because it's not a. Uh, I don't have to draw something first. It's not realistic. It's just an abstract thing and making marks and mixing the colors. Three colors turn into like six colors, and uh, I might do something like maybe a sixteen by twenty with that same idea that I did with that little square piece of wood. You have that handy? Can you grab that? Yeah, I go get it. Yeah, so let me, I'll give you a little bit of background. We are participating in the Lakeshore Art Festival Community Art Project. And, and this year it's um, a community project where anyone in the community, adult or child, can go pick up a four by four inch wooden piece um, and the, take it home and design it and then bring it down to the art festival at the end of June. And um, we are going to assemble all of them on a large frame to make a big mosaic piece, a community mosaic project. So um, some of our artists members at City Center are doing videos and you know, to inspire people and what they might be able to do with it. So Linda made a video of hers that we just posted this past week, and that, that's the finished piece there. So it's still going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can pick up. So I still have time to do that. Yeah, yep. just wood squares. See, they started out like wood. Okay. 
but um, I, I taped them together on the back so I could do them at the same time. So you can see where they're like connected, but um, I just started out with blue, yellow and yellow in the middle and red on one side and blue on the other side, which are the primary colors. But then when you start mix, I started mixing them with a palette knife, they turned into greens where the blue and the yellow are and orange where the red and the yellow come together and then started making marks. And it, it, the video, I didn't want to have a video that was going to take forever. So <laughs> I just did a really quickie, uh, less than five minute video. But then I look, I like these and I did um, varnish them. So they're like a sheen to them. They're a little bit glossy. And I think I might do something bigger like that just because it was fun and fast and uh, free and that too much thinking goes into it. You just start making marks and it was fun. Almost like that um, acrylic pour painting. You don't really do a drawing first or it's not realistic. It's just something fun to do and pour paint and let it see what's hap gonna happen. Beautiful. Thanks. I have a question. Yep. Um, just, I mean, you do so many different mediums and um, you are very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Adventurous. <laughs> Uh, but what what is your absolute favorite thing to do? I know that's a hard question, but you know you were talking about that which you had just done that brings you joy to do because it's so freeing. Um, but what what would it be that brings you the most joy? And all the different arts or. Yeah, different mediums, different. I can tell you the one that I like the least. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do um, stained glass, and it was really hard on my hands. What was it? Stained glass. Oh. You know, yeah. you use a glass cutter, and you're breaking the pieces, and you're um, grinding down the edges, and oh and yeah, copper foil. It was like. Oh, I was cutting my hands or hurting my hands or it was hard. It was just like, I did a few and it was like, okay, I'm not doing it anymore. And like fabrics, just the opposite are clay, you know, fabric is soft and, you know, yeah. you can hurt yourself with fabric and clay is like mud and fun to work with almost like Play-Doh. So the feeling of a lot of the different mediums and I I uh, not I'm not really I need to take some watercolors to learn how to do that because I think watercolors can be very challenging I'm not yeah I've took I've taken a watercolor class but I think watercolors are harder acrylics are easy but they dry fast and oils I need to the like the yellow lights on nubs knob they were taking over a week to dry that was yellow oil paint i thought i don't have the patience for it, waiting for this to dry <laughs> i got a, a person waiting because it's a commission somebody's waiting for this painting and it's not drying it's like i can't finish this and that's kind of frustrating so i guess acrylics is the easiest for the painting i like drawing a lot i like sewing with fabric and pottery, <laughs> I like a mom. A jewelry making, I really like, and I don't have the tools for that either, but I do like jewelry making. It's kind of like kids when you say, which is your favorite kid? <laughs> yeah. oh, that's neat. That's good. So what kind of things that you want to explore though? Like, it's almost like you've done almost everything, but what kind of things? I would like want? to do more figure drawing, but then I have to find a figure. <laughs> I could do the scale <laughs> sleeping on the couch. Or pictures I get, I can work for photos. And uh, I also have so much fabric. I think I really should start doing more fabric. There's some clothes that I like. There's a, like a certain top that I wear and I like it. I'm thinking of turning it into a pattern and then using some 
of the fabrics that I have to make tops with that same pattern. Oh, I did do that little embroidered scarf with the ginkgo leaves on it. Should be at the gallery right now. It's embroidery and beaded. That was fun to do because I can just do that while I'm sitting on the couch and like somebody would knit or crochet. I was thinking of doing more of those with uh, morning glories or daffodils or different nature leaves. I like the ginkgo leaves. <laughs> So do you have a studio at home? What is I your do. studio? I can show it to you. It's a mess. <laughs> Go and see it. Okay. I'll take my laptop with me. It's like some people just, you know, take over their dining room tables and um, oh, I do like to work on the dining room table because I feel like I'm in the main part of the house. This is the apron I just made. It's like a gardening apron. I me mean, here. Okay. Some of my pottery I've got up on top of this uh, desk. And got that photo I have of the sand dunes. And then This is an ink drawing I did of the Century Club. Oh, I just had it framed and um, matted. So I'll bring it to the gallery sometime. I don't know if you can see it very well. That is beautiful. Thanks. It was when we were outside last year and I was drawing the building. I remember you sitting oh, there. there. Ryan, when we were outside for one of our live art events, I think it was. Yeah, that's when I was drawing it. This is uh -huh. a watermelon I did in pastels. So your studio is just a few so, steps away. Yeah, it's like a four season room. Uh, my sister's cat I did in pastels. Um. <laughs> Oh, here's a off master park beach in the winter time. Okay. And is that a photograph, uh, Linda? That's a painting, acrylic. Oh wow! I used it. I I took a photo and looked at it, and then. This is a drawing pastels of my grandkids opening Christmas gifts. Oh, that's one of my favorites of yours too. Thanks. So if I can get the whole room in here. <laughs> okay, this where the pottery's on top of the desk. I usually have my laptop in there. A lot of the pictures I put on a, the laptop because it's bigger than a photo. Then this room has all these windows. Yeah. So. Nice. Looks bright and cheery to and be. And then there's a lot of art supplies in that bookcase. And that was Dale's mom's cabinet that put stuff in there. This, uh, I started collecting pottery when I was other people's art when I was in junior college, community college. This is by John Glick. I think he passed away last year. He lived in Detroit area. He taught at Cranbrook, I think. Mm -hmm. I bought that at Delta College when I was like 18 and it was only $25. Oh. Now it's about, I saw some on, eBay and they're like 460. So I said, if I ever pass, whenever I go to my kids, I said, don't sell that a garage sale for 25 cents. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So. so, okay. Well, Linda, do you have any parting thoughts for any, everyone? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you for allowing me to do this. I've never done anything like it before. 
Did you see the painting Aziza did of my granddaughter? I'm not sure. Oh, no. Maybe I should back up. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. My granddaughter came over my house here and she had her hair colored teal. I said, and she was playing the ukulele on my sofa here. I said, can I take a picture of you? And she said, no. Well, I didn't ask her again and I took her picture. <laughs> <laughs> and Aziza looked at it. She goes, can I do a painting of that, of her? And I said, I suppose I could ask her mom, but I wasn't even supposed to take her picture. So then when the painting was done, my granddaughter said, can I have that painting? Oh, so she liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I'm just really glad I was able to do this. And um... Well, we're glad you agreed to be our featured artist for this show. And we thank you for, you do so much for the gallery and you're there whenever we need someone to step in and either host for a day or. I like being there. It's, it's fun to be surrounded by all the artwork there. I enjoy going to the Muskegon Museum of Art too and just seeing all the new stuff and it inspires, that inspires me more than a lot of things just to see all the other people's art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I you know, talk to many of our artists that come in the door and some that we don't see that often that, you know, just need to get in to the space and feel inspired and right. usually they end up creating something when they leave. So yeah, well, this little project here was pretty, you know, just to get you started, just to get, get your paints out, just to get your brushes out and do something, you know, just to, you don't have to draw anything. It's just if you, you know, you can draw on it, you can do what it, I know somebody that um, does wood burning, she could probably do something on with wood burning with oh, the sure. wood. And those, are, um, those little squares are recycled pallets. Oh, are they? Yeah. They're not, they yeah. don't have levers. They're not real. No, they, they sanded them down. They, you know, oh. said you might need to sand them a little bit more if you're going to, depending on what you're going to do on them, but um, they sanded them too. So we oh, yeah. yeah, they're good. Yeah. So, so yeah, Shri and Julie, you could both do something like that. I'm yeah, I might swing by this yeah. Saturday, uh, Friday or something after work. I'll be there tomorrow. I'll be there. Tomorrow is what, Wednesday? Yeah. Too bad I'm still working sometimes. I feel like I just want not to work, <laughs> but. <laughs> One of these days, so. One of these days. Okay, well, I, again, Linda, thank you for doing this and everything you do for the gallery. And um, for everyone else, I know you ladies all know what our hours and all that is, but anyone else who might be listening, um, we are open Wednesday through Friday from 11 to 5, Saturday from 10 to 4, and Sunday from noon until 3. And we've got lots of things coming up. We already mentioned the Lakeshore Art Festival that we will have a, a booth out in front of our building. Um, we've got some upcoming art classes that we just posted. Maybe someday we can get Linda to teach a class. And then stop in and see our member show along with Linda's work, which is hanging through July 11th. So. This Again. project for the um, Lakeshore Arts Festival. Yes. Where will this? Where will these be? Is it going to be like in the center of that circle by the throwing ball? Yep, the roundabout right at Western yep. Avenue and Third Street. There'll there'll be people there to collect them. Okay. Uh, both days of the art festival. Okay. So yep, and make sure your names on them um on the back or however you want to sign it but just make sure you put your name on it and then those um once they're assembled they're going to travel around the community there you go look they're backwards to me around the community oh. so we may end up hosting one of the mosaic projects completed projects in the gallery I, i'm not sure if we're going to have room because they're quite large but uh, we'll try so 
All right. Well, everyone have a re great rest of your meet or evening. <laughs> Thanks, Linda, for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the questions. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks.